Giza is the iconic city of Egypt, home to its stunning pyramids and world-renowned half-man, half-lion sphinx. From pyramid hopping to camel riding into the Sahara, let me give you tips and tricks in getting around this massive historical site. Let's go. If you are taking a taxi or Uber to the pyramids, make sure you tell your driver to leave you in front of the ticket booth. Many times drivers will often leave their passengers in front of the pyramids, but not directly in front of the ticket booth in order to avoid the traffic leaving. So if you want to avoid walking over a mile in the 100 degree Egyptian desert heat, ask your driver nicely to be dropped off at the ticket booth. The ticket booth looks something like this. Prices vary from 200 Egyptian pounds, which is roughly around $11, to enter the pyramids and the Sphinx. But to get inside the pyramid, you have to pay 400 Egyptian pounds. I'll show you inside the Great Pyramid of King Khufu, and you tell me if it's worth going in for. Like I said, the first ticket will give you access to the Great Sphinx. The Sphinx was a guardian figure, the protector of the pyramids, and also represented the pharaoh's divine power. Being half lion, half man, this represented the perfect being. The body of a lion is represented as the strongest, bravest animal in the world, with the head of a human representing the smartest mind in the world. I'm a big cat guy, so this really made me happy to see. There are Egyptian photographers willing to take you pictures like this nice lady right here. For a fee, of course. They will use your phone, and they know all the perfect angles and poses to make sure your pictures look king-worthy. I even got to bust out my backflip in front of the Sphinx. Bucket list complete. Going from pyramid to pyramid can be a bit time-consuming, so you have the option of either taking a carriage ride with horses, moving on camels, or simply using a car to commute faster. We already had a paid tour guide, so we had the car covered. Eventually, we got to the entrance of the Pyramid of King Khufu. This structure took over 20 years to build, with over 4,000 workers and 100,000 slaves working every day with no modern technology. I'm just talking about hammers, ropes, sleds, and a whole lot of heart. The pyramid now stands over 455 feet tall, built with an estimated 2.3 million stones, each weighing a ton or more on average. Weighing an average of 15 tons, meaning one block would have to be laid every five minutes of every hour, 24 hours, for the entire 20 years. Perfectly aligned with Orion's belt, as well as the one in the pyramids of China and Mexico. This is some crazy stuff, like, do more research about this. This nearly impossible task is the reason that has stimulated rumors of the Egyptians being assisted by alien life forms to make this happen in the first place. Which may be, maybe not, be true, we may never know. Whether aliens came or not, all we know for sure is that this is a magnificent masterpiece one must see at least once in their lives. I hope you have your adventure boots on because as you enter, you will be met with a really steep incline to reach the center of the pyramid. As you climb up the incline, you are forced to slouch over, which was purposely made so you are bowing to the gods as you climb up to the center of the pyramid. Don't look down. This may cause mild discomfort. It is extremely steep, people passing by you in a very narrow and dark one-way path. So be careful. If you fall, it won't be pleasant to say the least. You can't sue the government if something happens, by the way. You are not in America. At the heart, it is mostly an empty room, but it used to hold the sarcophagus of King Khufu. There's also a hidden world of secret chambers and rooms that were unexpected through these tunnels. Perhaps the biggest discovery was a massive void nearly 100 feet long that lay just above the pyramid's grand gallery. By the way, if you think the desert of Egypt is hot, you're in for a rude awakening <laughs> once you get inside the pyramid. I kid you not, it was 20 degrees hotter inside. It literally felt like a sauna. At least they have two fans to keep you cool. This was truly an adventure to see the tunnels and venture through the inside of the Great Pyramid of Giza. 
You can also take pictures sitting on the pyramid too. I don't know how I felt about doing this since this is an over 4,000 year old structure and having thousands of people every day jump on top of it and throwing garbage all over it isn't the most respectful or best way to preserve it. We also got to remember this is a person's burial site so having a little bit of respect can go a long way. Still looks nice though. Just try your best not to damage anything is all you can do I guess. There's also a lot of salespeople around the pyramids, which is nice to buy some cool souvenirs like this Egyptian cat my mom bought. But it gets a little annoying after a while when they keep hustling you constantly, which is normal in their culture, so just be prepared for that. It was getting to sunset, so we found someone who was selling camel ride tours into the desert. It's never hard to find some of these people. They're all over the place. Honestly, there are probably more camels than cars in Giza. Make sure you've established a set price before you agree to have them take you. Because if the price is not clear, then they'll upcharge you. So make sure you are both in agreement on the price. It was a 30 minute camel ride to and from the desert. Which is great because I was enjoying my camel ride and I was in no rush to get off. His name was Mickey, ironically. Me being from Orlando, Florida and all. So... I thought this camel was perfect for me. I was finally living one of my biggest dreams, riding a camel through the Sahara with the pyramids and the Sphinx by my side underneath the sunset. This was a top golden moment in my travel career. Mohammed, my guide, was nice enough to help tie my shema for me. It came really in handy when it started getting windy and sand was hitting my face. Looking good. You are not alone. We pass by a bunch of tourists riding on camels and you have the option of horseback riding too if you know how to ride one. They also include ATVing and dune bashing as well. I loved my camel ride and Mickey was very nice, gentle, and adorable. I'll never forget him. Earlier that day, we were so hungry and the only restaurant that was really available was a KFC. Like, like, that was funny. Eventually, later in the day, we found this amazing restaurant that had a perfect view of the pyramids and the Sphinx in the background. I also got to finally order something I've been meaning to try that is uniquely Egyptian. Pigeon. Yeah, that's right. I ate a pigeon, and he was delicious. Kind of tasted like chicken, but better. Tasted even better with mango juice. The restaurant is called Heaven Lounge and Rooftop View. Don't forget it. It was kind of funny once it was nighttime, just seeing guys on horses and camels casually roaming through the streets really sunk in just how far from home I was. It was really cool to see such a different shift of what's normal and be able to enjoy the adventurous streets of Egypt, with of course a perfect view of the pyramids sitting upon the night sky. The Three Pyramids View Inn is somewhere I'd highly recommend staying for your accommodation while in Giza. Welcome by the same beautiful scene in the morning. I woke up early to catch the sunrise, being greeted by calm, quiet streets, men going to work on their horses, and some guy dancing in the middle of the road for the Egyptian military. Beautiful views and a show. What more can you ask? So, I know I didn't really do much filming here, because um, honestly I'm just I'm taking it all in. And also the fact that I'm kind of low on storage, so that's besides the point. It's honestly just great to see this, the sun just set over in the horizon. I'm right here behind the three pyramids of Giza. And it's just a great time, like, this was, Egypt is everything that I thought it would be in my dreams. And it's really lived up to expectations and beyond. Um, it's just really been an awesome experience. If you ever have the lucky chance to come to Egypt, to come to Cairo, to come to Giza, highly recommend 
It's really just amazing. Uh, it's a little bit windy right now, but uh, I can't I can't put it into words. Just try to find the time, the money, the energy to come to Cairo, come to Giza. You will not be disappointed. This is, I don't like to say this, but this is probably my number one spot I've ever been to in the world. Egypt, number one. Can't really say much about that.